These are the eyes of Mario Andretti, Indianapolis 500 champion. Your eyes may see 33 race cars roaring around the speedway every Memorial Day weekend. But these eyes have seen and lived the race for the past four decades. Today, they'll again see the Speedway's time-honored traditions of fanfare and spectacle. Mario and Freddy's eyes have seen the huge crowds that flock to the Speedway each year. Today, they'll scan a crowd of over half a million people. Mario has lived to race, to drive the Indianapolis 500. For it will always be the greatest spectacle in racing in the eyes of Mario Andretti. Twenty nineteen marks fifty years since the last time an Andretti drove into the Indianapolis five hundred victory lane. It was Mario Andretti who did it in this car, the Bronner Hawk, entered by the famous STP man, Andy Granatelli. Now, since then, one of the most famous aspects of the Indianapolis 500 has been the Andretti curse. Many Andrettis have tried, including Mario himself, as well as his kinfolk, Jeff, John, Michael, and now Marco has tried for the better part of the last 15 years to try to get into victory circle. In fact, Marco in this year's Indianapolis 500 is running a special throwback livery to this very car, but they've never been able to return to victory lane. So we're going to try to commemorate that today in Indy 500 Evolution, a Xbox 360 game uh, from about 2009, but it's a fantastic uh, window into the history of the Indianapolis 500. There was also an interesting other debut in the 1969 Indianapolis 500, and it was this team. You may know them as Team Penske. They debuted in the Indy 500 this year with this four-wheel drive Lola Ford driven by Mark Donahue. And ironically enough, in the time period between Mario's only win at the 500 to the present day, Team Penske, which debuted in the same 500, has won a total of 17 Indy 500s. That is a fascinating stat, and once again, speaks a little bit to the Andretti curse. But let's see if we can break that Andretti curse today in the same conditions that Mario did it in the 1965 Indianapolis 500. So I misspoke just a little bit. 1965 was, of course, Mario's rookie year. 69, the year we're racing, is the year that he won. And it's going to be a hell of a challenge today, I have to tell you. 50 laps, quarter distance race, starting 33rd. Got 32 cars to pass, and I have to tell you, this Brawner Hawk, despite that good start I got, is not the best car in the game. Not by a long shot. It's very pushy, very understeery. And we're going to have to be battling with that all day long and try to survive this race. As you can already see, there's some cars wrecked up here. Going to go down a gear, try to avoid some of this nonsense and I did it so we get actually get around Jim Malloy in turn two and start to chase down the first year Penske team with Mark Donahue there we're going to try to block Malloy there because I don't really want to go side by side in turn three on lap one that would be no bueno right down on the apex of turn three got another big big crash up here in turn three got to be careful Oh, they're wrecking big time. We're going to follow Donahue through. Wow. Wowie, wowie, wow. That was close. And now we got Mario and Donahue side by side down into the first corner. Let's see if I can make the pass down here. Yes, indeed. But I'm going to push a little bit because I drove it in a little too deep. Here comes Malloy down to the inside. Went down into fourth just a little bit to get myself a little bit. Look at all the debris from the first lap accident down there as we're going to get underneath Malloy down the back stretch, and Donahue's actually fallen behind a little bit. Ooh, very close with Malloy there. That was definitely a, an Andretti fade there. To get through turn three. This time a lot cleaner in turn four than it was last lap. 
A lot less cars on fire and spinning out and crashing all over the place. So now hopefully we can settle in just a little bit as we got more cars coming into the pits. We're already halfway up through the field just based on all those wrecks up to 16th spot. Now we got to be careful because there's cars coming out of the pits. And of course there's no real warm-up lane to speak of. So cars just kind of merge right back onto the track. And so we've got all the lappers here that I'm going to have to deal with. So I run off a of turn two a little bit wide, but not too wide. Not any, in any kind of danger of catching the wall. Dan Gurney, who actually finished second in 1969, is leading the race right now. So this could be very historically accurate if, uh, if I can get up there to battle with him. So we're all the way up to 16th spot. We're looking at some lap cars here to pass. I think these are the very cars that I passed on the first lap. As we're already seeing the push understeer there, almost catching the wall Hildebrand style there. We're still a second ahead of Donahue, so nothing uh, to worry about too much there. And we're 3.1 seconds behind Bobby Johns, who's the next car up the road. So part of this race is just going to be pacing myself, keeping the car on the black stuff and not in that... Uh, I was going to say white stuff, but the track, uh, the wall isn't very white. It's definitely uh, a gray or a brown. It's definitely a brown on the back stretch. And Jim Malloy starting to close in a little bit. Thankfully, I have that buffer there. I think that's Mike Mosley in one of the lap cars that was involved in one of the accidents uh, in the, on the first lap. So thankfully, he's going to kind of play a little bit of a, uh, a pick for me, at least at the moment. So I just try to work around this track. A little bit of understeer out of four again. As the tires start to wear, that's going to be another problem. AJ Foyt in second. And here they come trying to pass the lap cars. I would love to get back up to here to these lap cars ahead of me to try to put some more cars between me and Malloy, or Malloy and I. So I run through the center of the corner. Try to arc it down in turn two on the throttle out little bit of an rpm loss there the gearing isn't that great either in this car which kind of hurts it you don't really get up to the top of fifth gear and you lose so many rpms because there isn't as much grip in the front oh big crash in turn four but they all kind of ghosted before i got there we're already up to 12th Lots of cars in trouble there, though. Lots of cars in trouble. Up to 11th, 10th. Oh, we're already in the top 10. Five laps into the race. we got a crashed car or a damaged car down here on the inside. Thankfully, he dives to the inside. Lloyd Ruby, very smart there as we go around. Gordon Johncock as well. And who is this? This is A.J. Foyt, who was running in second. So we may have lost a lot of the front runners, actually. I didn't even see if Dan Gurney. No, Dan Gurney is still leading. From Art Pollard and Wally Dollenbach, senior, not junior. Uh, it's not Wally's world, uh, Wally Dollenbach. She's getting a big run on AJ here. And nowhere to quite go with it. Again, it looks like this race is just going to be survive. Get the pit stop right. We may be in a, in a pretty good position to win this thing, considering that six laps in, we've lost, or at least had at least 20 cars you know, involved in wrecks. I think I've only passed about three of them on track. One of them is Jim Malloy, who's right behind me, trying to repass me. So it might be in my best interest to try to keep Malloy behind me as best I can, because he's one of the few cars I've actually made a competitive pass on. And maybe AJ can mix it up with this lap car up here so that I can get a better, uh, get in better position and maybe Put some of these cars Our between me and Malloy as number four comes into the pits. I'm not sure which car that is. It's Lloyd Ruby. So, yeah, that was the car that we saw coming around uh, on the warm-up lane damaged. Car number 29 and we got another car in the wall. The another car in the wall. And these cars are flying up on him. Brakes locking up. But, thankfully, it looks like everybody's going to get through it okay as long as he doesn't come back up on the track. No, he doesn't. Thank you, Arnie Knepper. So we're still going to head, uh, head out ahead of Jim Malloy. Doesn't look like Malloy's quite got the straight line speed that I do. So we're going to come down here into turn one. Lloyd Ruby coming out of the pits. We get around him. A great 
pit stop for car number four. And you may have noticed in turn one, AJ uh, got around one of the lap cars. So I guess it would be for a position for him. But uh, he definitely pushed one of them very high in the groove. And that was a bit of a scary situation there as we've got Malloy all over the back of me. Well, they're going to go three wide in turn three there just in front of me. Uh oh, AJ very wide. Oh, very lucky that AJ didn't get into the wall there. It looked like he was going to hit it. You can tell AJ's car, because it's a lot more advanced than the cars around him, it looks a lot more like mine with all the wings on, on the cars. It's actually kind of a funny rule that they used to have back in these days that um, any aerodynamic device had to be an integral part of the car. Therefore, they couldn't do outboard wings. So they just put them on the car in, in random spots and said, well, it's structural. It's for the structural integrity of the automobile. And that's the loophole they used to get away with putting uh, wings on the cars. So that's why you'll see wings like, you know, like that. If you look, the gray bits on the car are like that. Oh my goodness, we've got a bunch of cars coming up behind. Everybody's getting held up behind me and Malloy. And I did not drive through turn three very well, and that's going to allow Jim Malloy to take that position. Take away ninth from me. Oh, and you can see I pushed big time off of turn four right behind Malloy. I might have a run here in turn one, though, as Mark Donahue's still not close enough to pass me. He's still stuck behind Mosley. Nope, I got a run on Malloy, but there was nowhere to go with it. You can see the... Uh, the grip that Malloy has that I just do not have. I'm gonna try to turn in a bit earlier to try to get the run off of the corner. That was a lot better. That was a lot better. Maybe running wide is uh, a better way to do it, especially in two, turns two and four. Yeah, we're gonna pass Jim Malloy here. Yeah, right underneath him. Little bit of a uh, fade by Malloy, and he's gonna pass me back around the outside. So he's definitely got the handling down on his car, no doubt about it. Because uh, I'm not sure how you could pass somebody like that on the outside in 1969. But it looks like we've got another run. Again, the straight line speed looks a little bit better for my car. And Mark Donahue's right behind me, so I'm going to pass Malloy. It's going to be right here, right at the end of the straightaway. And it's not going to be the preferred line for me, for my car, to try to go in underneath somebody. And that allowed Mark Donahue to go through. So not an amazing... Uh, decision from uh, Mario Andretti there. <laughs> Not very smart race car driving, but hopefully Donahue and um, and Malloy hold each other up here as they're going to go into turn three side by side. I'm going to try to enter wide. Oh, Malloy's going to get up in the gray. Almost hit the wall there. Oh, no, he did hit the wall. Malloy in the wall. <laughs> oh, Donahue just took no prisoners there. And so Donahue moves up into eighth. We're back to ninth, but we got around Malloy. So I guess that's what we should have done to Malloy is just uh, run him up the track like Donahue did. Car number 10 is smoking. Oh, and there's a Car crash behind. Car number 10. That may have been Malloy, actually. I wasn't paying attention to what... Yeah, it was Malloy. Malloy got into a lap car. I believe he got into Jack Brabham there world champion driver and um, yeah they had it coming together and into the wall goes Jim Malloy so there goes another one of the contenders early on now we will have to make a pit stop in this race probably going to be around the midway point so we're about 10 laps 13 laps away from that at this point and in fact, we are the last car in the lead lap in ninth because George Fulmer is quickly falling Number behind. 62 makes a pit stop. And because 62 is George Fulmer and he was the car that just uh, was announced as crashing. Uh, if you haven't heard, played this game before, Bob Jenkins, when he announces cars are coming into the pits, most of the time it's because they have crashed, not necessarily because they are making a pit stop. Sometimes it'll announce that a car is smoking and that's a much easier way to uh, determine whether or not a car has crashed. Car but he doesn't always say it. So number 10 is Malloy. And we're going to allow Blackjack Brabham down the inside. 
even though I definitely was a little bit too kind to him, I think. Probably gave him a little too much room. And we had a downshift there out of turn four. Now Lloyd Ruby's all over the back of me. Lots of cars behind now. I think Peter Revson's back there in the other Brabham. And here comes Lloyd Ruby down to the inside. He couldn't get to the inside of me. Oh, and Ruby hits the wall. And Revson will make the move down the inside. I'm not sure if I baited... Uh, I baited him into that move to hit the wall like that. I don't think we made contact. If we did, it was very light, and I didn't feel it. And we got Uncle Bobby behind us. Bobby answer. I think Bobby actually uh, ended up finishing third in this race. In real life, behind Andretti and, and Gurney. Just imagine that as a top three. <laughs> yeah, Mario Andretti won the race. Dan Gurney was second, and Bobby Unser was third. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good podium, have to admit. Pretty good. Mark Donahue has, has, has sailed away as we got Le Leroy Yarbrough, or Leroy Yarbrough, if you've ever heard a, an old NASCAR broadcast. We're going to let Leroy go. NASCAR driver, stock car driver. And if uh, you've made it this far into the video, you're going to get to see some cool names. But we are starting to fall back quite a bit. A bit to be expected. Again, this car is just not car as good as it needs to be. Car four is that one we're racing. I'm looking down the order. No, four is Ruby. So Ruby is back in the pits because, of course, he hit the wall. We saw him hit the wall a little bit earlier. And I think 66 in the wall. That is Jack Brabham. Or no, it's Mark Donahue. Excuse me. Mark Donahue hits the wall. He was trying to lap a car, and he got shoved up into the wall. <laughs> so as you can see, attrition going to be a huge, huge factor in this race. As Mark Donahue falls victim to this race. And running in eighth spot is not a bad position to be in. A great pit stop for car number four. Right now. Considering we're only 16 laps down, we started 33rd. Again, it's going to be, I think it's going to be almost impossible to win this thing. As Wally Dallenbach leads from Art Pollard and Dan Gurney. They have a pretty good fight at the front. We're running an eighth. Bobby Unser is 13 seconds behind us. He's actually gained seven seconds in the last couple of laps. I don't know if the cars that, that crashed early on will have to come back in and pit again or if they will be able to go the distance. That could mean that we will be way back in the order if that's the case. But we'll just have to wait and see. We're not completely running uncompetitive laps. 162 miles an hour versus our best at 164. So considering we're pretty deep into a, a run here, I would say we've got pretty good pace right now. At least we're running as close to our theoretical top as we could be, even though we've lost quite a bit of time to Bobby Johns. Again, not as important at this stage in the race. Again, not even halfway. Get it right down next to the white line. Pushed it a little too hard there, as you can see by the uh, ironically uh, named push out of turn three. Definitely kept a lot of space between myself and the wall there. And here we go. Mike Mosley looking to the inside. If I'm going to let him by, I'm going to let him by nice and easy. Maybe Gordon Johncock is going to go through as well. Yep. Gordon Johncock really wanted to get through there, so uh, I wasn't going to necessarily impede his progress. But I'll try to draft these guys if I can off a of turn two. Just don't hit the wall. Again, just trying to survive as best I can. This car is not good, I have to tell you. It's just not handling well. But but it always seems like the years that Mario had the best car, he didn't win. And some of the in the one year that he didn't really have the best car, he did win. So just something to keep in mind. Again, with how crazy this race has been, eight positions to make up is not that tall of a of an ask. I mean, 18 laps 
coming from 33rd to 8th in almost 20 laps. I think that's uh, that's almost Tony Kanaan worthy in terms of movement through the field. But again, our overall pace is not great. As you can hear, another car coming up behind me. Lloyd Ruby again. He's way off the pace, though, so we're just going to let him go by because he's like three or four laps down at this point. Just lift off the gas. going to follow him into turn three. You can see how much sliding is going on there. The front end of the car is just not hooked up at all. And because this is a very, very much arcade game from the perspective of... Um, guess accessibility but it is pretty difficult at this level that I'm playing it at uh, the pro difficulty um, there is no like setup or anything so it's not like I can just you know add more front down force or stiffen up the front or loosen up the rear or whatever it's not really how you can do it you can't really make sweeping changes to the handling of your car the only real way you can do it is to come in and, and get tires and fuel which we eventually will do, but it looks like it's going to be five or six laps. Um, I would like to be safe on fuel, so I will come in with like 27, 26, 27, 28 laps complete, just so we can have the freshest fuel and the or the freshest tires and the most fuel to finish the race. So we're going to run right around the bottom of the track. That was a pretty good line out of four there. Didn't lose too many RPMs. Even though you can see everybody in front of me is screaming away, I think they've all got fresh tires, or at least fresher tires, considering that they've been in the pits for repairs recently. And I haven't been. And I think Lloyd Ruby, who has been a wall magnet today, almost hit it again. It's kind of funny, cars can get uh, a fatal amount of damage and fall out of the race in this game. Uh, so it's actually kind of surprising to see as many cars uh, still in this race as there are, considering how many major pileups we've had to start this thing. Bobby John's 18 seconds out in front. So yeah, I really am going to have to rely on attrition because I just don't have anything for anybody else. And Bobby Unser is, is quickly closing in despite the fact that I believe he, again, was one of the guys who was involved in a wreck early on in this race. But he was able, he's been able to claw a lot of his time back. And I have not been able to. In fact, I may end up going a lap down to the leaders. I think I'm running that dismal of a pace. I haven't seen quite what the gap is to Gurney from me, and I'm not even sure they would give it to me because I'm in eighth. I think the, the gaps only go to sixth, uh, sixth spot. But it's fun to, especially in these years, to look at the names on the board and just go, my god, it's an all-star race. Oh, that was close. Maybe don't look at the names on the board. You'll push up into the wall. And yes, Bobby Unser is closing in rapido. Rapido. And there's not going to be a whole lot I'm going to be able to do, I think, to hold off Bobby Unser. I think he is coming and coming fast. I think I'm just going to have to drive as, uh, as kindly or as, uh, as well as I can. And when he comes by, he comes by. But look at that speed that Bobby Unser has that I just do not have right now. Here he comes. I think it'll be on the main straightaway when he actually is able to close in enough to make the pass. I may be proved wrong here. Whoa, look, yep. Oh, no. Bobby, Bobby is scraping the wall to get around Mario. Well, he proved me wrong. Boy, oh, boy. Bobby Unser is hooked up, and... Um, if he's not that far behind, or if he's, you know, he, he may be in contention to win this thing because he is flying right now. Too bad there's no yellows in this game, or full course yellows anyway. Because uh, Uncle Bobby could, uh, could be on his way if the field got packed up to really uh, win the race. Car's actually loosening up a little bit with the, uh, with the worn tires. It's actually not handling as bad. Now Johnny Rutherford 
heading up behind, and of course, uh, Lone Star JR, I got to talk to him, uh, interview him for the channel a couple of weeks ago. Pretty cool, even though I had to explain to him what YouTube was, and that was a bit embarrassing. I was just like, it's something kids watch, or young people watch. I didn't even say kids, I said young people. I know what my analytics say. <laughs> 18 to 35. Here comes Johnny Rutherford. Oh, I touched the wall. Somehow I don't think I hurt the car. Miraculously. That was very lucky. Denny Holm behind me. Another world champion in the race. So we are at the halfway point, so it's going to be time, almost time, to bring the car into the pits to get some fresh firestones on this car. Many of the cars in the race are running good years. Not mine though. 16 in the wall. That's a uh, walk up. That's the 24th place car, so that's not unfortunately not anything that's going to help my race. So we already fall back to 10th. Yeah, the car is a little bit damaged, but thankfully we're coming up to the pit stop. So I'll be able to come in for repairs anyway. 67, makes a pit stop. 67 comes into the pits. Are we getting lead lap pit stops, or are we just seeing cars damaged? That's a damaged car. Yeah, it's Leroy Yarborough. That's not a car we're racing. Jim Malloy. <laughs> I can't get away from Jim Malloy. He's coming up behind me again. And you can see on the tire wear uh, HUD that the front tires are much more worn than the rears, meaning I've been sliding the fronts quite a bit because of course this car is very pushy as Dennis Holm almost passes me Bobby Unser style around the outside and that is for position but it seems like my car is a little bit more evenly stop. matched car with Holm because of course that's a Dan Gurney All-American racers car of course Gurney's leading the race right now so not really a surprise that that car is fast. So we get way out to the wall there. Gary Bentonhausen, Bud Tinglestad. Lots of names, lots of cars all around me right now as we get to lap 27. So I think this will be the lap I come into the pits. Make me stop. As Bentonhausen's going to try to go around the outside. A little bit of contact there. And Gary B, not sure what he was thinking there. Have to admit... Not the brightest move in the entire world. I mean, I was giving him room. And around the outside he went. We fall all the way back to 15th as Roger McCluskey comes around. And there is the leader, Dan Gurney. So yeah, we are going to get lapped. On lap 27, getting the blue flag. I don't think I've ever gotten legit lapped before in this game. But we are about to. Because I'm going to go real low and allow Dan Gurney to make the pass. Oh, no! Really? Who was that? <laughs> Wally Dolan back. Oh, dear. Well, um, the Andretti luck <laughs> strikes again. Mario does not finish the 1969 Indianapolis 500. It's a little bit like Avengers. Uh, the uh, you have the one chance, the one in a billion chance to win the Indianapolis 500, and um, this wasn't the one. The one was the one that Mario won, and uh, Dan Gurney uh, makes good on the promise, wins the race from Art Pollard, Carl Williams, Bill Vukovic, uh, Jim McElreath, Bobby Johns, Bobby Unser, who would ended up finishing seventh, Rutherford, Holm, Knepper, Bentonhausen. And Bentonhausen, uh, yeah, I had words with him after the after the finish uh, for uh, his little bit of an oopsie there. And you can see I probably would have finished about where Donahue finished, so 17th. It would have been a fantastic race. It would have been nice to get to the pit stop. I almost got to the pit stop, but I ended up getting absolutely uh, destroyed by uh, Wally Dallenbach, who finished 28th. So that was disappointing, but I guess that's almost the story of the Andretti's at Indianapolis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more Indy 500 Evolution gameplay, Indy car content, and Indy 500 month, and we will see you in the next video.